घेऊया सो वेलकम बॅक एव्हरीबॉडी टू दिस आफ्टरनून सेशन सो sorry for the small delay due to small technical reasons so we are going to proceed uh, i don't know if the second speaker or the first one if uh, francis dejean is around because we could not identify him if it's not the case then we'll ask the second speaker nana klutze to i mean share her screen and then proceed with her presentation and she's not in meeting nana is not around no okay francis also is not there no okay any of the following ones semi semi are you around Yes, I'm around. Okay, good. Then you can share your screen and then uh, proceed with your presentation. Okay. So you have 20 minutes talk and then try to manage five minutes, the five remaining minutes to for discussion. So in total, 25. Please, all the guests, it would be good to mute your microphones. Okay. Can I start? Yes. Okay. My my name is Adisu Seme. Uh I'm assistant professor in computational data science program at Addis Ababa University. Ah sorry Adisu, can we see your face please? Yes. Okay, okay. sure. It's much easier to follow a, a talk with the a face to the name. Okay. Uh, I'm just Okay. Can you hear me? Perfect. Can you Thank hear you. Me? Okay. uh so my, my research interest is to study the organization of uh, conviction in um, in uh, the organization of the mechanism of organization of conviction uh, in tropical region so today i'm going to present you my recent work on a uh, relationship between precipitation extreme and convective organization in fact from uh, satellite uh, observations uh, since i will use uh, a conviction several times uh, let me uh, define what conviction is uh, for people who are not from atmospheric physics so convection refers to any motion driven by the buoyancy and in the atmosphere is Uh, manifested as a vertical motion of air parcel due to atmospheric instability driven by surface heating and relative cooling of the atmosphere convection refers as deep when parcel originating in the boundary layer exceeds the trade inverger layer so as you can see it in the uh, graph in the picture we see a uh, deep convective clouds Uh, and these deep convective clouds are uh, aggregated together and they form cloud clusters so whenever i'm talking about organization of convection please try to picture this image uh, uh, this image so uh, deep uh, deep convection uh, exhibits a wide range of spatial and temporal organization and they are ubiquitous in the tropical uh, in the tropics uh, as you can see it here in infrared image showing the intertropical convergence zone itcz and that circles the globe around the equator sorry uh, itcz is indicated by bands of deep clouds uh, deep clouds which are white in the image Uh, th uh this has been related to variability of weather and to the occurrence of extreme rain uh, rainfall events 
Observations and numerical simulation have been used to investigate the role of uh, convective aggregation in climates. So our question is, how is organization of convection related to precipitation extremes? Up to now, uh, there is no consensus among modeling studies. Enhancement of uh, some, uh, some uh, simulation found uh, enhancement in extreme precipitation when convections uh, become more organized, while others could not find uh, an increase in precipitation extremes with organization. Here we are going to use uh, observations of tropical and apply a new diagnostics, uh, diagnostics to link between convective organization and aggregation, uh, convection, uh, aggregation of convection and extreme precipitation. Here is the outline of uh, my talk. Uh, uh, first, I'll talk about characterization of uh, precipitation field, uh, then spatial distribution of deep convection in satellite observation. Then I'll discuss about uh, the uh, link between organization of deep convection and uh, ex uh, extreme precipitations in local and uh, domain uh, range. So here, uh, uh, latitude and lo uh, latitude, uh, longitude and latitude domains of 10 degree by 10 degree uh, are considered to be mesoscale domains. Since the, the, this size is comparable to the domains of most cloud resolving model simulation, uh, model, model studies of convective organization. In the uh, figure, we are seeing a brightness temperature. TB is brightness temperature. Uh, and the other one is uh, precipitation field. So both of them, are, this snapshot uh, is uh, taken at the same time. So for a given brightness temperature, we have the corresponding precipitation field. Uh, the, so with, uh, within the 20 degree south and 20 uh, degree north tropical belt, we consider uh, a one degree, uh, a one degree of a moving box of 10 degree by 10 degree. So the, uh, this box is uh, moving every one degree. So we have a brightness temperature for each one degree and precipitation field. So we have like a total of uh, uh, 14,400 boxes for a given uh, snapshot in, the, in this tropical uh, belt. So when we characterize uh, a precipitational field, first we obtain the data from Trim 3B42 product. And this has a special uh, spatial resolution of uh, 0 0.25 degree by 0 0.25 degree. Then uh, we consider it this mesoscale domain, which is uh, 10 degree by 10 degree. And the total precipitation, PT, is a combination of pre uh, precipitating region, uh, uh, PR, and non-precipitating region. So we have uh, precipitating and non-precipitating region. And the precipitating region uh, further divide, uh, classified into weakly precipitating region and strongly precipitating region. According to this paper, uh, we, uh, we consider strongly precipitating region as uh, uh, when, whenever they have value greater than uh, two millimeter uh, per hour. So, uh, we define here PT and PR to be, PT is the total domain scale and PR is the local scale precipitation respectively. So we can write PT as a product of fractional area of precipitation region and uh, intensity of uh, precipitation region. And the precipitation region can be written as a sum of uh, weakly precipitating region and strongly precipitating region. So AR shows the fractional area covered by a weekly. Uh, AR is the total uh, precipitating region. When we say AW is the fractional area uh, uh, covered by weekly precipitating and AS is the fractional area uh, 
covered by strongly precipitating regions. So uh, there are uh, there are more than 546 million uh, mesoscale domains, 10 degree by 10 degree domains, when we consider all three hourly uh, data over a period of uh, 1998 uh, to 2010. Uh, we, remove, we remove all the domains uh, for which more than 1% of the area is covered by undefined precipitation data. So when we do this, this reduces the total number of 10 degree by 10 degree domain by 20, 27%. So here we are showing the PDF, the PDF uh, of total precipitating, uh, total precipitating and a precipitating region. So uh, this is the domain scale precipitating. This is the local scale precipitating. So the dark light, uh, that uh, the uh, it, it is clearly shown that the local scale precipitating, uh, precipitating uh, precipitation is much higher than the domain uh, mean precipitation. Then uh, from this, uh, we calculate the 99th percentile. So uh, in, the, in this paper, the uh, 99th percentile, the values greater than the 99th percentile are considered as extreme precipitation. So the domain, the domain scale, uh, the domain, uh, domain scale precipitation, which is PT, has a 99 percentile of 1.18, whereas the local scale uh, uh, 90, uh, precipitation, uh, 99 percentile of the local scale precipitation is 4.25. So all values greater than 1.18. Uh, is considered as extreme precipitation for the domain scale, uh, for the domain scale, whereas all precipitation greater than 4.25 are considered uh, as extreme precipitation for the local scale. So their value is PT99 and uh, PR99 respectively. So whenever we, say, we see PT99, it refers to the domain scale extreme precipitation. And when we are seeing PR99, we have to, uh, we have to connect it to the local scale extreme precipitation. So uh, this pre uh, uh, precipitation extreme, so what we are showing here is a frequency of occurrence of the two scales. The first one is the PT, the uh, domain scale, the, uh, the lower one is the local scale uh, uh, pre uh, extreme precipitation. So uh, the, what we are seeing is for a given uh, grid, uh, we are calculating the frequency of occurrence of uh, uh, extreme precipitation in the direction of time. So most of the uh, uh, domain scale uh, extreme precipitation events occur over warm pools of tropical and western Pacific Indian Ocean. We, uh, uh, warm pool of tropical western Pacific and Indian Oceans. Whereas the local scale extreme precipitation mostly occur over uh, tropical land. Uh, the other important parameter uh, is number of convective centroids. So uh, from this brightness uh, temperature field, uh, we identify the local minimum. Like for a given three degree by uh, three by three grid, uh, grid sat pixels, first we identify uh, the local minimum. And uh, once we identify the local minimum, we compare it uh, with a value uh, with a threshold value. In, in our case, uh, 240K is, cons uh, is our uh, threshold value. If it is less than the threshold value, that point will be considered as our uh, convective centroid. Uh, as you can see in the figure, all these red uh, points are the convective centroids. Uh, one thing here, uh, here we have the same number of convective centroids, but their spatial distribution is uh, uh, completely different. This one seems more organized than this one. Similarly, here 
uh, the, the number of centroids is 105 uh, in this, and here also is 104, but these convective entities are distributed differently for these uh, two cases. So in order to quantify the different spatial uh, distribution, we introduce a, a matrix called IORG, an organization index. So what this index is do, uh, once uh, it will calculate, it will calculate the nearest neighbor distance between the convective centroids first. So every time it will calculate the nearest neighbor's uh, 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 distance, then we'll take the cumulative density function of this distance. So we have NNCDF, which is nearest neighbor cumulative density function. So this curve shows the nearest neighbor distance and we have the uh, uh, corresponding uh, nearest neighbor cumulative density function. So the black curve shows the one that we calculated and the blue curve is is the assumption that it is calculated from the theoretical value of Poisson's distribution. It assumes that the distribution is random. So we use a randomly a random distribution. So uh, we compare these two curves. So the one which is actually calculated, the NNCTF, and the other one is the Poisson's uh, nearest neighbor uh, cumulative density function. So uh, what we found is the blue curve shows uh, if uh, the distribution, uh, the distribution of the conv uh, convective centroids are randomly, dis uh, randomly distributed, we would have found the curve to lie on the blue line. So that shows uh, the distribution is randomly, uh, is random. But if the if it is below below the blue line, we would find uh, we say that it is regularly distributed. And if it is above the above the blue line, then it is uh, considered as uh, more organized. So to uh, to quantify this value, we integrate the area under uh, the the curve of, uh, the under the black curve. So it will give us a specific value that enable us to quantify the level of organization. So we applied this for all the domains to, uh, to calculate. So all our domains have number of convective points and they, uh, we can also quantify the level of organization. So here, for instance, the number of convective centroids are 34, but they are differently distributed. This one it appears to be more organized than this one. So our index captured this information correctly. Uh, and we, uh, we introduced this uh, in, uh, in our previous paper with Adrian Tompkins. Uh, we applied it in the cloud resolving model and it's, uh, it successfully captures the uh, evolution of the organization. And now we are applying it to the observation data. And here also we have like uh, uh, the number of convective points are uh, uh, the number of convective centroids are 104 and the distribution is looks like uh, randomly distributed. So as you can see it here, the curve seems uh, closely overlap to each other. So, uh, so this is our space the uh, organization in uh, at the level of organization and the number of convective points. So uh, for a given for a given uh, snapshot, uh, we have for a given brightness snapshot, we have the corresponding precipitation. So we will get the number of convective points uh, here and we have the corresponding uh, precipitation value from the precipitation field. Uh, in the first order, the number of convective po uh, point is inversely related to the uh, organization, but it's not always true, but uh, usually when we have more number of convective points, uh, the, uh, the, it, it is, uh, we found to be less organized. So here also uh, nicely captures the information. 
Then we study the, the, the link between uh, uh, the mean precipitation and uh, convective organization. So we, uh, for each group of N, so we have a group of, uh, we classified uh, uh, our data into a group of number of convective points. So for each group of N, uh, we have a level of organization and corresponding value of mean precipitation. So these, the, the, the level of organizations are indicated by, by the uh, dots, like the blue one shows weak, weakly organized, the green is, uh, uh, is less organized uh, and strongly organized and uh, highly organized is dark. Uh, dark red. So for a given number of convective points, we have this uh, different category. It, it is classified into different quartiles. And we can see also their corresponding uh, precipitation value. So uh, for both uh, total precipitation, um, I mean, for domain scale precipitation, PT, and for local scale uh, precipitation, PR. And as we can see here, in both cases, as the number of convic uh, uh, as the number of convective centroids increase, uh, the precipitation also increase. And also, uh, we see that stronger clustering is associated with uh, weaker uh, mean precipitation. So. Now let's see uh, the link between precipitation extremes and convective organization. So for a given, uh, for a given, uh, so th this is similar to the previous one, but what we are showing here is uh, the extreme precipitation. This is that. Sorry, uh, allow me to interrupt you. Just five minutes left, please. Okay, okay. Uh, the, uh, the, this is, uh, uh, domain scale uh, ex, uh, extreme precipitation, and this is uh, the local scale extreme precipitation. So what we are seeing here is uh, uh, for a, a given N, there is no systematic relationship between extreme uh, precipitation, uh, domain scale extreme precipitation and level of organization. So it's not clear in this case, but when it comes to uh, local scale extreme precipitation, uh, it increases systematically. So the, with the increase of organization, we see higher efficiency of precipitation. So it increases uh, systematically with the degree of convective uh, clustering. We further see this uh, with the uh, fractional area of uh, uh, precipitation. So here, uh, we see uh, PT, uh, the fractional area for the domain scale uh, precipitation, and this is a fractional area of uh, uh, local scale precipitation. So the AR uh, also increase with the number of convective points. But when we see the strongly precipitating region A, which is defined by AS, uh, fractional area of strongly precipitating region seems to be uh, uh, related with level of organization. So uh, higher level of organization uh, seems to, uh, to be linked with higher values of AS. So uh, this is true for both cases, for the um, uh, domain scale and and uh, for the local scale uh, precipitation. So the fractional area covered by heavy precipitation increases with level of organization in all the mesoscale domains where extreme events occur. And non-precipitating area has a stronger weight on uh, domain scale precipitation, PT, than the small portion of the domain covered by a intensive rain rate. So that's why we were not able to see the link between 
uh, domain scale uh, extreme precipitation and level of organization because the non-precipitating uh, non area has a stronger weight. So in conclusion, uh, extremes uh, in domain scale precipitation, uh, which occur mostly over the ocean warm pools, primarily depend on the total number of convective centroids within the domain. Extremes in local precipitation, uh, which occurs mostly over land, depends on the degree of convective clustering. Uh, observation suggests a strong link between the intensity of extreme rainfall at the local scale and the organization of deep convection, uh, especially over land. So this is our key message. So we, are, we can see it in the observation that there is a link between level of organization and uh, uh, extreme precipitation in the, at the level of local scale which is important information, especially for the modeling to, to this enable them to, uh, to predict better if we understand the mechanism. So finally, uh, uh, I, have, I have done most of this work in collaboration with uh, uh, Sandrine Pony when I was doing my postdoc at uh, CNRS and LMD lab. And also I would uh, like to thank uh, Adrian Tompkins uh, from ICTP who helped me to develop a reliable organization index. And uh, this is my in current institute. Uh, thank you. Good, thank you for your very nice talk. The talk is now open for questions. Any question? Yeah, Ali. Yeah, so uh, thank you Adisu for your, for your very interesting talk and for injecting some uh, climate physics into this uh, very diverse uh, meeting. I have uh, uh, two questions for you. The first one is um, in regards to, you know, these convection pictures that you showed. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume that these are, they're dynamical processes, right? Yes. So th these things change over time. So um, in, in, uh, in, in some of these, these density plots that you had, is this something that you, you get uh, by averaging over a certain amount of time, or is it an, yeah, how, how do you build that figure, basically, is what I'm so asking. So what we did is, uh, for a give, for every snapshot, like, uh, so we, we calculated for a period of uh, uh, 1998 up to 2010. So we consider all of them at, uh, at, uh, in the same box. So we I put see. The, I see. I put see. the data I see. in the same box and we do the uh, calculation uh, from those data. So that's but how but how, like. what is um, okay? So so you 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 lump a lot of data over many uh, obs over long times into the into it. What is how much what variation is there uh, in in those patterns? I mean, they, they, obviously there are different variation like diurnal variation, uh, seasonal variation, annual. So we consider all these things. Uh, uh, our interest here is just to see uh, how they are related. Like for, uh, the, the, for a given, a given uh, period, like we have the brightness temperature and we have station value. So how are they related? So is there a connection between the level of precipitation and the uh, organization or the characteristic okay. convection? Okay. So okay, okay. This is similar to what we were doing in the modeling. So uh, we wanted to see how, they are, how these two things are uh, related. I see. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? You can write in the chat or well, I, if, if nobody asks, I will <laughs> uh, before. So, I, you had two questions, so I was. Yeah, exactly. No, no, I was waiting for someone else to. Um, so, is there? Okay, I'm a, I'm a completely ignorant to this, but uh, is there any correlation between these extreme precipitation uh, events and uh, pollution? So aerosols. Like what, is there any connection or is it uh, completely meaningless to, to even ask that question? Uh, actually, uh, 
it's a different area. Uh, so I didn't look at the impact of the pollution. Uh, I mean, there are people who are working on the uh, on this uh, aerosol impact. But I, I can't give you accurate answer for it. Okay. No thanks. Good. Any other? I would have one yeah. question. Yeah, Sebastian. <laughs> uh, thanks for the nice talk. Um, so you see a clear differ difference in between tropical convection over land to over oceans, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, organization matters for the extreme precipitation over land more than over ocean. Um, was this yeah. surprising to you? Yes. And, uh, okay. And yes, it's uh, it is uh, surprising. Actually, our assumption was uh, always uh, we thought that we always find uh, organization uh, enhance uh, the extreme precipitation. So, but I would expect so as well. Yeah. But uh, um, uh, but we were not able to see this uh, over the warm oceans. So in the warm oceans, what dicta dictates the extreme precipitation is the number of convective points, not how they uh, how they organized. So when there is more number of convective uh, 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 convective entities, then it tends to have a higher level of uh, extreme precipitation. But over land, there is a, a local uh, dynamics which will make it uh, to be more intensive. Yeah, I would also expect that the dynamics of convection over land is kind of more complex. Even you can get supercells and maybe squall lines more often. Yeah. Yes, you are. You are right. So. Somehow, uh, still, uh, it doesn't solve this uh, 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 this ambiguity in the uh, modeling world. So, some models found this uh, a, a enhancement uh, related with organization, and the others were not able to see it. So, we, our result is somewhere in the middle. So, we are saying both of you are correct. So, uh, what we are seeing over land is. Uh, uh, similar to those people who found higher uh, extreme precipitation with organization. And for those who are not able to see it, the impact of organization on extreme precipitation is similar to what we have seen it over the ocean. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, Professor Tompkins, did you have a question? No, it's okay. I, I will, I'll let it drop. Uh, it's, it's fine. I think it's being covered. Thank you. Ah, okay. Okay. Sorry, I didn't see you. It's just now. That is... No, no, it's okay. I don't want to hold things up. It's okay. Thank you. But we have some time. If you want one, two minutes, it's okay for us. Unless... Um, no, I was just really uh, wondering a little bit, actually, is, uh, if you could thought more um, about the implications for climate modeling with larger scale models. I mean, is this something that you think uh, should be incorporated somehow into uh, global models of climate where really we don't really have any representation on the subgrid scale of convective organization, but they do uh, manage to reproduce uh, organization, should we say on the result very large scales. Do you, so do you think, because when you talk about the organizational index, uh, you haven't mentioned very much whether it's the smaller or the larger scales that dominate. So I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about those scales and um, whether it's something you think should be focused upon in GCMs or do they already represent it? Yeah, I think the, uh, our main message here is we have to understand the mechanism uh, properly so that, uh, so that we, we will integrate uh, this information in the GCMs. So, uh, we are asking to understand this mechanism in depth uh, as it has been done uh, in the modeling world. So uh, it, we are asking for more uh, understanding of the process to, in, to enable us to integrate this information in the NGCM so that they can, they can forecast uh, extreme precipitation uh, uh, better. 
So yeah, do you, do you get that your question or? <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm muted. Yeah, no, <laughs> thanks. Okay. So uh, I think that uh, I, I really appreciated your talk. You can see that it uh, drove many interrogations. So now thank you very much for your talk. And then we are moving now to the next speaker from uh, Stellenburg University, South Africa, Professor Daniel Makinde.